Hello friends and welcome to the Gamer Down. This is your host Dark Hostess and today we're looking at Dead Space 2, the sequel to the critically acclaimed Dead Space 1. And here we go. The game begins with a little bit of a flashback but essentially starts right where Dead Space 1 ended. In Dead Space 1, you were part of a space crew sent to intercept an object found on a planet. And there was a bunch of religious connotations that, and, and this religious group wanted it for themselves. So, Isaac, are you there? this team went to go get the artifact, and this artifact turned everybody into monsters. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Unlike Dead Space 1, this time they've given your character some personality and he actually speaks. In number 1, he was just like Gordon Freeman from Half-Life and you were just the, the puppet master and you didn't hear anything he said and you had to leave a lot to your imagination. But now they've added a personality and more of a backstory for Isaac and it plays out more like a movie, unlike the first. I played Dead Space 1, but I can't genuinely say I was scared or anything like that. It, it takes quite a bit to really rock my world. Even though I like turn the lights down and turn the sound up, that's really the trick to get into the whole affair. But I really wasn't very scared of the monsters in number one. But really the only adventure horror game that ever really spooked me was Condemned Criminals. That game was one freaky adventure, I tell you that. I could only play it in sessions because I'd just get too freaked out and I'd have to put the game down for a while. But everybody's different and what scares me might not scare you and vice versa. Yes. Part of a mining operation on Aegis 7. I understand communications went down shortly Right now we're being arrived. interrogated by a guy that you looks surprisingly like Ed Harris. A mission for which you volunteered, am I right? What did you find aboard that ship, Isaac? They found something. What did they find aboard the ship, Isaac? The marker. Did you have contact with this marker? Oh no. Here comes the ex-girlfriend. Have you ever noticed that ever since The Ring that every scary girl looks just like that girl? They all look like they just crawled out of, out of a well or something like that. And it was all just a dream. You know when you see a black guy in a movie or a video game that his life expectancy is usually about 10 seconds? Dana... I found Isaac Clark. Repeat, I have him. Great work, Franco. Be careful. He's been out a long time. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Good, good. Steady, steady, steady. We gotta get you out of this straitjacket. Where, where am I? Alright, I, I know you're confused right now. I can explain everything, but you gotta trust me, okay? Listen, you're in terrible, terrible danger. Was I right or what? Maybe it's the predictability of these type of games that keep me from being scared because I knew for a fact that guy was going to get killed before he even said anything. Bleh! Only a face a mother could love right there. The first part of this game is, is basically the tutorial and all games should really do tutor tutorials like this. You're, you know, you're using the controls, you're told exactly what to do and after you get the hang of it it's no problem. That seems to be a growing trend and I'm all for it. Just put the tutorial right in the gameplay. Let people learn as they play. No sense putting it off to the side and some separate entity. As you saw by the giant flashing E there, I just pressed E and tosses the guy right into the elevator. Sounds good. Now time to look around a little bit here. Of 
course, games like this get their heritage from Doom 3, Fear, Condemned Criminals, which I mentioned before. And here's where you save right here. You get your save slide. If I can get it open again here. And there's your sla save sl slots right there. Try saying that three times. There's lots of little cutscenes like this where your camera's locked and your controls locked, then you're free to move again. That was funny, this guy. He's completely unfazed by this whole thing. Oh, there's a torso there. It must be uh, pretty hilarious for the modelers of this game. Oh, yeah, today uh, we want you to model a bloody torso, if that would be alright. There's the radio chatter, which I always love since. Half-Life, not really, those little touches like that really make games. The radio chatter and the uh, little things laying around that show like somebody was actually there, the little details. Now, one of my biggest bitches about this game is you can't jump. You're locked to the floor. Uh, a lot of games use this uh, method to uh, corral you, and when you can't jump, you know, you just you just feel weird, especially when most games allow you to jump. You know, let's watch this little scene here. And well, this is another change they've made since the first one. In the first one, you would pick up these data recordings, and it would just be a recording. But now they have a full-fledged video scene that you can watch and get a lot more information on the backstory. Come on, Strauss. I'm here to help you. It was black. Deep black and glowing red with symbols. Symbols whispered to me. And what did the symbols whisper to you? Come on, Strauss. What? It was just sharp. It was just sharp, but it... Put so much stuff in my head, so much shit in my head. There's no more room for anything. I can't remember what she looks like. I can't remember what she looks like. The symbol You must admit, though, that the, the graphics and everything are outstanding for this game. Kill them. They didn't deserve like the acting in this little scene here is just... This. It's just amazing. Fucker. It really gets you into the mood for the for the game and really pulls you in, which is a great improvement from the first one, I must admit. Subject is Nolan Strauss, Section 158. Now, Reminds me of some of the doctors I've been seeing lately. And anyway, it just loops around and you can watch the video again if you really want to. My eyes looking much better today. But we're not going to do think? that. It hurts. It still hurts. Yes, I'll schedule you for another session tomorrow. No, no, no I, I don't think I'm ready. I, I don't think I can take another session. I don't care. First thing tomorrow. Let's talk about what you saw today. This game does have a lot of things jumping out at you, so you should always be on your toes. Always expect it. Like this. Yep. Those little fast movements are what really like just kind of jar you like that. But if you know they're coming, then it kind of negates them. But they, they, you know they'll get you by surprise every once in a while. This game really does have a very strong story, and you do get pulled into the story, and it, it, it has two movies to go along with it, and I highly recommend watching both those movies to get the full gist of the whole thing going on here. But 
the story the story alone is 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 top notch. Really is. Back in a flashlight in that wall locker. You should grab them. Go ahead. Now that we're freed from our straight jacket, we can finally move our arms, get a little movement here, and interact with a little bit more stuff. First thing is obviously the health packs, which we're gonna need a lot of, and. One thing about this game is you have to conserve your health packets Isaac, and your bullets and everything. Or if you run out of either one, you're dead meat. Ah, cut myself shaving again. There I go. Why do I have the feeling that everyone I meet is going to be dead in this game eventually? I guess that's why they call it dead space, huh? And waiting on the elevator here. Just Clark, like in you? real life, takes for freaking say, ever. I'm the one trying to rescue you. Why? What's going on? You're suffering from a unique form of dementia, Isaac. Something you contracted on age seven. How do you know that? How do you know all this about me? Your dementia will kill you. But if you can get here, I can treat you and get you to safety. Why should I trust you? Because I'm not the one shooting at you. Fuck. Just follow the route I'm sending you. Finally it shows up, and here we go, up to floor number two, I believe, or maybe we're going down, who knows. Now this little innovation here is really badass. You just hold down the B button and you can have a straight line to anywhere you need to go. Your objective or your save station and a bench, whatever. If you want to go sit on a bench for some reason or a, a store. And I, I don't know why there's a store in the middle of space uh, surrounded by all these dead guys. But there's supposedly a store around here. I've yet to find it though. Now I say innovation, I, I know that the line on the floor thing's been done in quite a few games and it's a, it's a, you know, it's a good tool and I think that more games should use it definitely. Now that you've been given a flashlight they really darken the game down so expect a lot of more things jumping out at you from the dark and as soon as you pan your flashlight something's going to be jumping out at you. Like these guys, you know, you just have a feeling that just one of them, one of them is just going to stand up and just do something crazy. See, like the little crap like that just popping up out of nowhere. That's what really gets you in this in games like these. You know, you're walking along, then all of a sudden, boom, something's right in front of you. And this game has quite a bit of that. And what's more scarier than a bunch of wheelchairs? I, something about a hospital and wheelchairs and blood on the walls. Just, you know, those kind of things just really creep you out. Now here, I, I didn't realize I was locked into aim mode, which is your caps lock. And when you're in aim mode, you're not allowed to interact with objects. So it took a little bit of time for me to figure this out here. I, I knew something about this. I, I knew this is where we needed to go. But I couldn't interact with it. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure it out. So you'll see me stumbling around here a little bit. Trying to figure out what's going on. I just knew that's where we needed to go. So I'm walking around here and I, I press the left mouse button and it pulls up this little menu there. So I guess as you progress through the game, all the slots will be filled up and 
you can select different methods to use your little tool there with. See, it, it lets you go through the doors, and that's why I was so confused. So I stopped here and tried to figure things out. Finally, after fumbling around, I figured out it was my caps lock. There we go. Now we're free to move around and inter interact with things again. So, back to that little object we saw earlier. The one I knew that was the way to go. And here we go in the darkness. Where's that flashlight at? And here we go, climbing through the uh, obligatory vent. It seems like every one of these games has to have the vent you crawl through. I, I guess it is just you know something that goes back to cartoons or old movies or something like that. We must escape through the vent. right there is why you should never get an event kids because you're just gonna end up falling right through it I swear to God why are you helping me now this guy something bad's obviously going on with him and let's see if we can fix it here and you'll you'll know I'm, I'm, I'm learning this game as we're going along so you're gonna see me stumble a few times here One thing I do like is this game has taken a lot of elements from other games, like the gravity gun from Half-Life 2. And that's basically what this kinesis grab is here. You pick up something and you can throw it around. He doesn't like that. Despite it telling me exactly what to do, it does take a little time to master this kinesis gun here. When you hold something, it doesn't stay held forever. It, it, it'll hold for about five seconds and then plop, it goes right back down to the ground. And as you'll see here, I get completely mutilated by this guy. And, and when the creature gets on you, I mean, you have no time to react, really. I mean, you're pretty much dead if one of these guys get anywhere near you. So let's try this one more time here. And another thing I didn't notice is uh, you see the little things attached to the bed here they fall off like little match matches that's what they reminded me of big old giant matchsticks and those are some very great projectiles to use so pick up one of those suckers there and go to town on them as soon as you launch something the bad guys start coming out so you try to be a little prepared, but you know the the one one thing about this is uh, you, you're you're stuck to the ground, so you're constantly trying to jump. If you've been if you play other games, you know that's the first reaction is to jump. Uh, ended up getting that guy right there, but the movement is a little slow. I mean, you, you can hold shift and run, but the run is uh, not exactly that speedy. And you'll notice that I'm picking up money as we go through here, which I assume you'll eventually use at that store, if we ever find that store.
And here we go. Up to the next floor here. As adventure horror games go, you really can't go wrong with Dead Space or Dead Space 2. They obviously put in a lot of money into this game to make it. And they've learned from their mistakes. And they've improved quite a bit since the original Dead Space. In the original Dead Space, they listen to the comments from gamers and use those comments to improve the game for Dead Space 2. And it looks like they've done a pretty damn good job of it. It's a lot of fun. I've, I've been having a lot of fun playing the game so far. Except, you know, it takes time to get the hang of, as you'll see here. I'm, I get slaughtered very quickly, just out of the blue. I mean, you see, you're supposed to press the E key, your melee key, and your interact key, but... If you're a little too slow, like I am sometimes, then you're going to end up on the floor with blood splurting out of your neck like crazy. But once again, one of my biggest complaints is the inability to jump. Because you get stuck in these little areas like right over here, and since you can't jump, there's nowhere to go. And if you're figuring the game out like I am right here, you're just trying to figure out where to go and what to do and how to get past these guys. So eventually I managed to slide, slide right by him right here. Thankfully they're really, really slow and you get a little distance and you can uh, launch and kill a couple at one time with one of those little matchstick looking things there. Or if you find a body there, but these bodies just don't seem to do the do the trick here. All they do is seem to knock the guy down and up. Oh, he's back up again and launch the body at you again and he's still coming at me. And while I'm all busy looking at this guy, somebody comes right up behind me and ends up slaughtering me. I won't let that happen again. Now I could have edited that out, made me look like a pro here, but I thought it might be entertaining to watch me get slaughtered a couple of times, and I try to be a little bit more proactive here. I, I tried to grab something before they got to me, and worked out pretty good. There, I got two with one blow right there. Now the part where I really feel like a dumbass is I realize that by just pressing the left mouse button that you have the strength of the Hulk and you can practically just plow through everything and all these guys with just your hands. So if I'd only known that then it would have been a lot easier. That kin kinesis gun, I mean that, that seems uh, alright but hell your damn ba bare hands seem to be doing a lot better job. And once again, there's no jumping, so here I am. I was looking for a path. I th thought maybe use the kinesis gun to try and move those little objects, but no, you have to walk all the way around and back around the little trail here. And that's that's something I really don't enjoy much, but yeah, you know, it's part of the game and it's part of the scripting, and it, I, it, I guess it has to be done. If I guess if you're jumping over the objectives and getting off the game's path then it would really mess with the scripting so you're really locked in to the floor and locked into the script and now you're informed that stomping stuff creates money who knew that so if you see ever see a dead guy on the ground and if you just go up to him and stomp him real good yeah 400 bucks pop right out of him See right here, now the melee tip pops up. If I only knew that the melee existed, then I, I would have used it all along and I, I would have been plowing through the game all along instead of trying to mess with that kinetic gun. So that, that really didn't make a lot of sense that 
just now they're giving you the melee information. They should have given you that right at the beginning. Anyway, there seems to be a lot of stuff going on here. Somehow they got this guy strapped down, despite his flailing arms there. And this is actually a puzzle. You have to try to figure out how to get past this guy. So you'll look around and you'll try to get by him and then you'll get knocked on your ass right there. So you'll eventually look around like I did and figure out the trick to this whole little puzzle here. So here I thought, okay, I'm just going to run. First I'm going to try to beat on him a little bit, but then I'm going to try to run fast with the shift key and uh, see how that goes. And you can guess what happened, I imagine. So after realizing that isn't going to work, I go ahead and decide to look around and find this guy in here. They got something going on with him. It's alright buddy, you're going to be okay. You, you, thank God, please come help me. Are you a doctor? Calm of down. course I'm a doctor. Haven't you ever seen a doctor in a straight jacket covered in blood before? It's just an everyday thing, man. And now the fun begins. We'll finally get a weapon. Alright. And supposedly there's many weapons in this game. This is just a basic blaster. And with it, I'm sure we can get past that other guy with the crazy arms over there. Puzzle solved. As we reach the end of the video here, I'll wrap up my final thoughts on Dead Space 2. And I have to say it is an excellent game. It is an excellent horror adventure game. And there really is no other horror adventure game out like this right now that can't compare it is the best one that's out right now so if you're looking for a good horror game then you should you should for sure pick up dead space 2 it's everything the critics have said about it this has been the gamer down and i'm your host dark hostess thanks for this little adventure with dead space 2 with me and i'll see you next time thanks